Every corner of the earth is littered with debris from an ancient past that we are still trying to piece together. The current geographical layout of the continents suggests that we were separated by water, and earthlings like the aboriginal people seemingly developed their culture completely separate to the rest of the civilized world as we know it. So you would think that if they developed separate to the rest of us, then they would have different variations of events regarding biblical happenings, right? But they don't have these differences. In fact, their creation stories and their understanding of the gods are eerily similar to other world culture creation epics, seriously suggesting that the creation of man stems from a singular point and spread out in every direction thereafter. It is completely unclear how humans spread across the world and exactly from which location and, of course, who are our creators. But one thing that can be agreed upon is the fact that the aboriginals have creation stories that directly corroborates other religious texts despite many thousands of miles of separation by land and sea. Wait till you hear this. In a remote corner of Arnhem Land in central northern Australia, the Aborigines left paintings chronicling 15,000 years of their history. In a find that has stunned archaeologists and anthropologists, a vast wall of about 1,500 paintings of the history and happenings that these people would have been fascinated by. One site in particular contains thousands of individual paintings and 20 discernible layers depicting everything from cruise ships to dugong huts to arrogant Europeans. Alongside exquisite rock art more than 15,000 years old are paintings that capture some of the 19th and 20th centuries most important technological innovations, a biplane, bicycle, car, and even a rifle as well as portrait traders. The discovery is clearly of international significance, unprecedented in artistic and technical merit, and telling a new story of contact between Aboriginal people and other world's cultures. Contrary to the popular view that indigenous Australians were isolated on their island continent, waves of other seafaring visitors arrived long before British settlement. For hundreds of years, there may have been an export economy in Northern Australia driven by the Chinese appetite for sea cucumber. While it has long been known that McCaskins traded with Aboriginal people, the accepted date for this was in the early 18th century. The team of scientists believe it may have begun many centuries earlier. The rock art dismantles the popular identity of Australia being a nation first visited by the British. It goes against the idea of by sentinel and convicts. Embraced by Middle Australia, but shunned by cosmopolitan elites, convict ancestry is a neglected aspect of Australian identity. Whether claims of convict ancestry are real or imaginary, the power of foundation myths to provide shared memories is evident in the salience of convict connections in Australia. The first rock art expert known to have seen the shelter was George Chalupka in the 1970s but the exact location was lost until a doctoral student at the Australian National University, Daryl Gus, relocated it by working with a local Aboriginal elder. Apart from conducting the first full recording of the Leary art, the team of researchers discovered thousands of other rock paintings previously unknown to science. This was the first part of a three-year national program to uncover the archaeology of first contact with Aboriginal people around Australia, but the researchers fear that without urgent government support, the Arnhem land sites could be severely damaged. Tourism is rapidly expanding in the Wellington Range, and one of the most important rock art sites, known as Malarak, is being severely degraded by visitors. Mining companies are also sweeping into the area. The range is a prime site for uranium and other exploration. Currently, there is consideration for an indigenous ranger program to be established to ensure the sites are properly managed. According to Aboriginal belief, ancestral spirits assumed human form thousands of years ago to create the world and Australia as we know it. Applying red, yellow, white, and black pigments to rock, indigenous Australians began recording tales of this creation period, known as the Dreamtime, as early as 50,000 years ago. 
Over time, they illustrated everything from hunting methods to laws and ceremonies to early contact with Europeans as a means of imparting knowledge to future generations. Today, these ancient canvases represent some of the oldest and longest running historical records of any group of people in the world. Thanks to conservation efforts, many of these ancient rock paintings have been preserved and are open to the public in Australia's Northern Territory, offering a rare connection to one of the world's oldest living cultures. On each site, subjects can range from ancestral spirits to now extinct animals like the Tasmanian tiger, often overlapping with newer figures layered on older images these paintings transport visitors into not one, but multiple worlds and time periods and into the very consciousness of the human being as we knew it. Who exactly the ancient aboriginals are depicting is open for scrutiny. The now very famous Wania's depictions has popularized the culture as having contact with humans from somewhere else, and in fact these people do tell us of the sky people. Like all world cultures, an overwhelming interest exists for the aboriginals in all things related to the sky, and indeed, they were obsessed with the astronomy of space. Aboriginal Australians may be the world's first astronomers, as stargazing plays a critical part in the ancient cultures of the 300 or so aboriginal communities. Some aboriginal elders can name almost every one of the 3,000 stars that are visible to the naked eye, and they can even point out the ecliptic along with the planet's travel. They carry an intuitive map of the sky in their heads so that at a quick glance at the night sky tells them the time and the direction which they are traveling. Of course, this knowledge doesn't come easily. An elder spends a large chunk of their time memorizing information that's been passed on from generation to generation. This is why these ancient rock arts were so important for future remembrance. You can let us know what you guys are thinking on this topic. And as always, thank you for watching.